Layoffs are back again this year, but this time they're a lot worse. Amazon announced that they're laying off 30,000 employees. Probably due to overhiring. And if you look at the data, the number of people being let go isn't slowing down at all. Something about this round felt different this time because it wasn't just junior engineers or contractors getting cut. And it wasn't just based on poor performance reviews. Entire teams that were once considered untouchable, like AI research, robotics, and even core cloud engineering, they were suddenly on the chopping block. So the real question is why? What's happening to these companies that they aren't saying out loud? When you zoom out and look at the patterns across Amazon, Meta, Google, and the rest of big tech, the answer becomes clear. This isn't a layoff cycle. It's a reset driven by the rise and possible bursting of the AI bubble. And today I wanted to talk exactly about that. So let's get into it. Okay, so first I wanted to talk about the seriousness of the layoffs that happened this year, and particularly the ones that have ramped up in late 2025. Now, I made a previous video back in July about how companies were laying people off under the guise of performance reviews, but we found out that it was a lot more complicated than just that. Companies were trying to cut corners and figure out how to prevent paying large severance packages to their employees. Companies like Meta were letting people go on maternity leave due to poor performance. And stories like this popped up everywhere back in July. I even saw some of this firsthand in my own experience as a software engineer. And if you want to watch the fully detailed video about that, you can check that out right here. But anyways, that's why I decided to investigate in the first place. So for context, Amazon, among other companies, recently laid off a lot of employees. And of course, many were blindsided by this, as always. So if we look at TrueUp.io, we can see that a record 46,000 tech employees were affected by layoffs back in July but that number has slowly been holding steady after the initial dip in August. But then in September, we saw another 19,000 layoffs, October had another 21,000, and in November, we finally saw 28,000 layoffs. So why has this number steadily been increasing since August? Because we all know there's gonna be another round of layoffs in the new year, as it's always been happening when companies reevaluate their revenue in the new fiscal year. But what about these round of layoffs is different than the previous ones? Well, let's talk about the AI bubble. So it's no secret that a lot of people believe that we may be heading towards an AI bubble. And honestly, the signs look very similar to the dot-com era. Back in the late 90s, every company rebranded itself as an internet company. Today, almost every startup and tech legacy product calls itself AI-powered. OpenAI alone has said it's going to spend $500 billion on data centers in the United States. Okay, so in that NPR clip, the host talks about Sam Altman placing a massive bet on AI infrastructure. Billions towards chips, data centers, and energy. His view is that a few companies will become trillion dollar winners, and most others won't even survive the transition, like the dot com era. That's why he's betting big on the hardware layer of AI. But not everyone shares this confidence. Even before 2025, we were seeing signs that the revenue of many AI companies weren't actually matching their valuations. And now analysts are warning that this could escalate in 2025, leading to even more layoffs. For example, let's look at Stability AI. So they're the creators of Stable Diffusion, and they struggled financially until they laid off staff. And they even saw major leadership shakeups in 2023 and 2024 because their revenue never actually matched the hype that they created. Now, the same thing is going for Anthropic and OpenAI. With Anthropic, they reached a valuation above 20 to 30 billion dollars, but internal documents showed that their revenue was just under a billion dollars, raising concerns about sustainability if the enterprise adoption slowed. And with OpenAI, they faced scrutiny over massive computing costs, and they reportedly burned hundreds of millions of dollars a year just to keep ChatGPT running. So across the industry, reports from McKinsey, Gartner, and Bain warned that AI spending was rapidly outpacing AI monetization, meaning that companies were pouring billions into GPUs and infrastructure before they were proving their revenue model. So by late 2025, many analysts believed that we were reaching a breaking point. AI valuations kept climbing, but the actual revenue, especially for non-LLM, non-infrastructure companies, wasn't keeping up. And that financial pressure is one of the biggest reason layoffs looked different this year. So what does all this mean for tech employees? Is the future just going to continue to be grim? Or is there a silver lining waiting for this bubble to burst? 
Okay, so let me just cut to the chase. Because the market is uncertain, we'll still probably see these layoffs happening until the market reaches some sort of stabilization. Economists and analysts have been saying this for over a year. McKinsey, Gartner, and Bank of America Global Research all note that currently, the AI economy is in a high investment, low return phase, where companies pour billions into AI development long before the revenue catches up. Historically, industries shed workers during this time until valuation correct and profitability becomes more clear. So what that means is that yes, the AI bubble may partially burst, not in an everything collapses kind of way, but in a dot-com style correction where only a handful of AI companies will come up with a sustainable model in the long run. And this is exactly what The Economist and MIT Technology Review have been warning us about. A future where major winners emerge, kind of like when Amazon and Google emerged, but there will also be a long list of companies that will fail once the hype dies down. But once the market stabilizes and it's clear which AI products actually generate revenue, hiring will eventually go back to normal. But the industry won't look the same at all. The old tech industry, the one built around ad tech, mobile apps, and SaaS, that's not coming back. We're entering what NVIDIA and Boston Dynamics describes as the next big shift, a world driven by AI hardware, robotics, automation, and applied AI in the physical world. And that's why I'm actually optimistic. Because as unstable as this moment feels, it's opening the door to entirely new categories of innovation. And that's what tech is all about. It changes all the time. This is just one of those influx moments where a rapid change has happened. So one of the biggest changes will be in robotics and automation. So the World Economic Forum predicts that automation and robotics will create millions of new roles by 2030, especially in logistics, manufacturing, and healthcare. Companies like Amazon, Tesla, and Boston Dynamics are investing heavily in physical robots that depend on advanced AI models running on device. Then there's the AI hardware and chips. So according to NVIDIA's investor report, the biggest bottleneck in AI today is the hardware, not the software. Demand for GPUs, power, and data center infrastructure is bloating, which is driving a massive growth in semiconductor engineering, chip design, power systems, and cooling and energy infrastructure, a whole new group of engineers. Another rapidly growing sector is medical and biotech AI. This is one of the few areas with actual revenue and adoption already. It's not just hype. FDA approvals for AI medical tools have already surpassed 690 systems as of 2024. And McKinsey estimates that AI and healthcare could unlock over $100 billion dollars in value annually. This includes AI-assisted surgery, medical imaging, drug discovery, and personalized treatment models. We're also seeing the rise of edge AI and real-world systems. A big shift is actually happening away from cloud-only AI. So according to MIT Technology Review and ARM's 2024 industry report, the next wave of innovation is AI running directly on devices, powering robotic fleets, autonomous vehicles, smart factories, and consumer AI appliances. Imagine AI in your home, like in your fridge, in your microwave, in all of your appliances. This creates a huge demand for engineers who have an understanding of embedded systems, or even real-time AI and hardware software integration and multi-module sensing. And finally, AI governance, safety, and regulation, that's becoming a massive field as well. The EU AI Act and global regulatory proposals are creating strong demand for data set auditors. So AI safety engineers, compliance specialists, and fairness and bias experts, which I actually talked about in this video here. So if you want to get into more details on that, feel free to check it out. So these are brand new engineering roles right now, and they'll only grow as governments enforce stricter standards on how AI is built and deployed. So the future, although kind of fearful, is also hopeful at the same time. I do see all of these new technology fields emerging in the midst of the AI bubble potentially bursting. So in a way, we're living through the end of one era and into the beginning of another. The layoffs that we're seeing right now aren't random. They're the result of an industry that grew incredibly fast. And now it's being forced to reinvent itself in real time. And yes, the AI bubble may partially burst. Yes, some companies may not survive, but corrections like this are how industries mature. The dot-com bubble didn't end the internet. It cleared the way for Google, Amazon, and the modern version of the web as we know it today. So when the hype settles and the unrealistic valuations 
fade away, the companies that do remain will be the ones that are building the future. Robotics, AI hardware, healthcare AI, energy systems, edge computing, and the safety and governance that will make all of this reliable enough to trust. These aren't just side projects. They're the foundation of the next decade of innovation. So yes, things are tough right now. Layoffs are painful, unpredictable, and quite frankly, unfair. But they don't mean that tech is dying. They mean that tech is changing. It's going through growing pains. And if you can understand what's happening next, you won't just survive, but you'll thrive in the next phase. So if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and even subscribe if you want to watch more videos about the future of tech, career advice, and AI insights. I'm dropping technical videos, hard-hitting tech documentaries, and even career advice about what to do next as a software engineer or just a person in tech. So stay tuned. See you guys later.